is Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! The Dawn of Destiny. Hey there, guys. Blood Mod 14. And yeah, we're actually doing some commentary in this Let's Play. Heck yeah. Now, for the last few um, episodes, we've been, you know, we've been kind of on a dueling marathon. Uh, now, I don't remember exactly... Let me check something real quick. I don't remember exactly where we're at as far as who we need to unlock and stuff, so let me just check. Okay, so here we have these three. I haven't started this at all. Okay. So let me just double check. I'm pretty sure Esperova and Lumis and Umbra are unlocked, because I know for sure Merrick is. But let me just check real quick, see if we need to do those. Lumis and Umbra and Esperova. Esperova's here. Okay, good. All right. And uh, I think everything's looking okay on the recording. Uh, so yeah, basically the plan is... Um, we're gonna do this this triple here, triple nine, in order to unlock uh, these three guys. And I'll do them with commentary, I think, for these three. And I, I might do like one single duel versus Yami Merrick. Oh, wait, wait, matter of fact, now that I think of it, I definitely want to do like maybe even four or five single duels with Yami Merrick because, man, in single duels, the theme that plays with that guy is just epic, dude. And like. I could commentate dueling against that guy forever, but, um, so, that's the plan, um, also, I think the next tier, we might do the next tier in this episode, in this, uh, batch of recordings, too, because from what I remember, the next tier, I don't think there's anyone new, per se, so, uh, that's the plan, uh, for the next few episodes, so the next few episodes will have commentary, and then, of course, I'm gonna do another long batch on the, uh, HDMI recording device. Uh, uh, right here, and we're going to, uh, yeah, do some more dueling marathon, you know, once I've unlocked, uh, more people. So, that's the plan, uh, let's do it, guys, let's do it, um, let me know if you like the commentary or you do not, um, uh, uh yeah, because even the ones without commentary seem to get quite a few views, uh, let's duel against, no, let's duel against issues at first. Yeah, you do have 12,000 life points here, so it's not too bad. Fate has brought me here to duel as it is my destiny to defeat you. Okay, Ishizu. Whatever you say, I don't believe in that hocus pocus, pocus magic. It's all a mind trick. My mind's playing tricks on me. Your power's not real. I control my future, Ishizu. And I'll prove it by summoning... That's right, I trim you, Obelisk! And now, I'll summon my, my loyal servant, the Blue Eyes White Dragon! Pretty good music here as well. Alright, Dawn of Destiny. MST is good. Uh, let's just, uh... Set... Uh, these... Well, let's set MST too, in case I need it. Um... Now, um, I guess let's talk about Ishizu's deck. She actually has a pretty big red flag here on the field, and this is basically kind of what her deck's around. Kind of like Taya, but Fire Princess. So, inflict 500 points of damage each time you increase your life points. So, back here, I'm expecting, like, an Enchanted Javelin. Uh, if you've got bad luck, she'll have, like, Mirror Force, but, yeah. Oh, no traps. Okay. Well, she might play the Healing Trap now that we've done damage. Oof. How dare you? How dare you insult my family? Yes, how da dare I insult your brother Merrick, who has literally chained people to anchors. But yeah, there's a new minute seal there, so. Uh, but yes. Anyway, we'll end the turn there. And of course, I'm sure as you guys have seen in all the dueling marathon, well, and the ones with commentary though, all the AIs, they, they all have, uh, let's play Solomon Wishes. They all have, you know, Dark Hole, Raijiki, um, Mirror Force, Magic Shillin. We gotta watch out for those, but, you know, otherwise we should be just fine. And I'm not sure which deck I have loaded up here. Well, I guess I have the Earth deck since I have Guy Power. I guess we'll try to discard a card from our hand, if we can. But, now that I'm thinking of it, what does she got here? Oh, Wing Egg Elf. Okay. I thought she might have something with high defense. Yeah, basically, at some point in the game, you know, once you get to about, I think, 
triple number 10 and up, yeah, basically everyone's going to have 2,000 point defense monsters, so, you know, be, be uh, ready for that, you know, in this game. It's just, it's just a fact of life, you know. And we discarded uh, Marie, the fallen one, which is going to help her, yeah, as long as this is in the graveyard, 200 points each turn. I am my tune, and she's, let's see what you've got. So basically, she's going to gain life points every turn now. One face down. Okay. Well, her traps haven't been too bad so far, so... I was thinking maybe I'd just attack, but I don't really have any monsters on backup. So let's let's just get rid of whatever she's got back there. What do you got, Ishizu? I activate Mystic Space Typhoon. Ha! <laughs> Your enchanted javelin is useless. Yeah, so kind of a waste of MST, but... I just wanted to make sure we didn't get Bear Force there. Another card gone. What is that? What is that? I can't tell. It is. Ah, Doma, the Angel of Silence. How perfect is Shizu. For now, I will silence the moon forever. Go, Slate Warrior. Ha! <laughs> you ever hear you should stop with a clean slate? That's because he's gonna scrape you off the pavement. Attack a life once directly with air cutting. One face down. How much you want to bet? Now she's got mirror force. How much you want to bet, guys? Let's see. Well, hmm. Let's just play devil's advocate. Let's say that's uh, Enchanted Javelin. I attack a white magical hat. She doesn't lose this turn. However, the AI seems to play its traps right away. So let's see if this works. Oh, it's just straight up going to work. Well, then again, she might have Magic Cylinder, who knows. Down to 1,400 points. Ah, Bright Castle card, eh? Go, Slate Warrior. Scrape her off the pavement. <laughs> Looks like you should, you're should. you starting with a clean slate, since you no longer have any life points, Ishizu. I, I lost? Is it possible that people can change their destiny? Yes, in fact it is. That is one of the weaknesses of the Millennium Necklace, as Kaiba proved in the show. I mean, the, the ability to see the past is pretty pretty clear-cut, it seems. Uh, well, even that may not be clear-cut, because, like, uh, compare to, like, the vision Ishizu shown in the past, compare that to what we actually saw, you know, for, you know, especially the stuff from Seto, right? Because the images she showed uh, Kaiba, like, you know, it seemed like he was against the Pharaoh and being a jerk, but... Once you got into the Millennium World Saga, I mean, basically, uh, Seto was more or less a loyalist to the Pharaoh, so, yeah, maybe even the past isn't quite clear with the Millennium, uh, puzzle, because, you know, once Yami, uh, you know, used the three god cards and entered the Millennium World, yeah, the world he entered, I mean, the Seto we saw in that world was quite different from, uh, the one, you know, Ishizu kept showing in those visions, so... And, of course, you know, Kaiba proved that, you know, people can change the future. It is hard to do. It's not easy to do, but, yes, people can change their futures. That is one of the power weaknesses of the Millennium Necklace. All right, Jar of Greed. Now, I don't want to lose Tomato so to a Mirror Force. I'm actually going to switch Tomato to Defense. Uh, you'll find out... In this game, uh, much like in the anime, o Odeon strategy, uh, I summon the gummy bears. Yeah, I play trap hole. <laughs> this destroys your monster. Yeah, much like in the anime, he goes with a really, and I mean really, really, really. I know a lot of people in this game have, you know, good traps, but this guy has a really, and I mean really high uh, trap uh, count deck. Uh, thank God you didn't flip summon man eater bug first. That would have been bad. But, uh, okay. Now nah, we're good. Uh, tomato. What should I give a tomato? Oh, tell you what. Let's grab Witch of the Black Forest. Next turn, I'll probably tribute for Cybertech. I know it's dangerous with all of his traps, but we've got Premature Burial in back up, so. I could always Cyber Jar, too, though. Maybe I should Cyber Jar. Seems like it'd be safer. Let's activate Jar of Greed, see if he plays a trap, first of all. But sometimes he'll chain... Okay, sometimes, very rarely, he'll have a uh, Royal Decree. Mmm, Fairy Box. I don't like that. If I attack with Cybertech Alligator, then... Uh, yeah, I really don't like Fairy Box. 
Okay, you got me, Odeon. You got me. I'll switch which to defense. Cyber Jar time, baby. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, Odeon really much like in the anime. Now he doesn't have trap monsters like Embodiment of Unfocus. Uh, he also because I don't think those were invented yet. Uh, he also doesn't have um, Judgment of Anubis. Thank God. So Harpy's Feather Duster is safe. Uh, also, uh, we'll just take uh, Marie here. Hopefully, we can discard her somehow. Also, he doesn't have uh, Mystical Beast of Circuit, which is usually Odeon's main boss monster in uh, most of the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh games you're gonna you're gonna find. Uh, I guess we'll go with Cyber Jar here. Alright, and perfect, we get to Cyber Jar on our turn, because he didn't, he attacked our witch. Uh, Morphing Jar, I will set, I don't really mind losing the cards in my hand, ooh, Snatch Deal, that's, ooh, Slate Warrior. Uh, do I want the flip effect? This guy doesn't have too many high defense monsters, so we'll summon an attack. Uh, <laughs> definitely put that in defense, yeah, Sinister Serpent, yikes, ooh, Duster, good, good. Call of the Dark, interesting. Yeah, some of his traps aren't as good as the others, but yeah, Slight Warrior, that's to be expected. That is his uh, cover card. Morph, he has a Morphing Jar. Ah, okay. That is good to know. So, knowing that, let's try Harpy's Feather Duster. Let's try to clean up those four cards you got, Odeon. Ah, uh, Magic Jammer, huh? Oh, wait, what? Oh, Griffon Wing, interesting. It's a good thing I didn't set my cards first. So if you didn't know, uh, Griffin Wing here, uh, this is basically, it's basically his judgment of Anubis, basically. Uh, yeah, when your opponent activates Harpy's Feather Duster, all your opponent's spells and traps are destroyed in place of your own. So yeah, watch out for that. Watch out for that, definitely. Uh, we'll set this. So this is Slate Warrior and Morphing Jar, right? Right, right. Okay, so let's... I haven't summoned, and I know we're gonna get jarred here, so let's premature burial. Let's just go all in here. Premature burial, let's get uh, Witch of the Black Forest. There we go. No no torrential tribute, thank God. And let's summon, uh, Zambara's pretty strong, but ultimately, you know, since I'm gonna kill a monster this turn. Oh, no way, he has Slate Warrior. Maybe I should go with Zumbira. Yeah. No, no, no. I'll have Witch destroy Slate Warrior. Slate Warrior was this one, right? Okay. But I have to get through Fairy Box. Uh, so, yeah. Now that we've played as much as we can from our hand, let's try to get into his Morphing Jar. Witch, attack this one. Torrential Tribute. Don't really mind losing that because we've got a full field. You cannot escape my trap cause. Haha. <laughs> now prepare to face the unrivaled wrath of the Gummy Bears. Go, my wing dragon of Bar Ra, obey me, and attack him at once. Uh, what's he gonna get this time? Ah, I think that means our attack works, right? Yeah, it does, good. Okay, so we have a shot at his life points this turn, that's good. And he's gonna discard White Hole, all that, Judgment. Right, he loses his shield, that's good. So we both get five cards. Oh yeah, and what time are we at? Uh, about 14 minutes. Ooh, United we stand. Also, I'm very glad to see uh, Solemn Wishes. The extra life points might definitely help us out against our last opponent. Because as you might have saw there, oh, of course. Well, well I'm kind of glad that that happened, though, because at least we got you know rid of his monsters. And we don't have to worry about him flip summoning Slight Warrior or anything. Uh, but of course, uh, oh yeah, we do have our Morphing Jar. I'll go ahead and set this. But as you may have saw in this uh, in this triple duel, uh, Merrick, uh, Yami Merrick, I mean, does have 8,000, so that is something to watch out for. For sure. A couple more traps, and there's there's his signature card, Slate Warrior. Uh, we'll go with Solemn Wishes here. That way we can start, you know, gaining extra life points for Yami Merrick. Plus, Marie's in the graveyard, so that's good. We're going to take a chunk here, though. Yeah, 13. Pretty big chunk. Good for you, Odeon. Plus, this monster's in attack mode. I'm a little worried, wary to attack, uh, since he does have, uh, 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 let's probably grab Penguin Soldier here. Since he does have Slate Warrior, yeah, I am a little wary to attack it in attack mode. 
that. Maybe I'll try one attack, but yeah. Ooh, Mystic Space Siphon, okay. So, oh, I can always steal this Slate Warrior, though. Oh man, I didn't even think of that. Let's try to steal it. Let's try. Let's just see if this works. You probably got a magic gem or something, but... Oh no! Wow, okay. Well, we do have... Hmm. If I flip Censure Serpent, that is game. 1919 is 38. If all the attacks go through, that is. Okay, we'll try. We'll try it here. Okay, good. No torrential tribute. Let's just try and see what happens. I'm assuming the 300's gonna work, you know, from the coin, so. You cannot escape my trap cards, Wheeler! Haha! <laughs> that isn't at all what Odeon sounds like, but that's okay. That's right, I, Master Merrick, am a. am a. am an asshole. I have an unreasonable dislike for, uh, gummy bears. Freaking lay them out! <laughs> now I summon the Easter Buddy. Odeon, why are you such a big baby? Baby, baby. Mom. Oh wow, that actually worked. I'm surprised he didn't play any of his other three traps, but very glad to get past Odeon easily. Your strategies prove you are a true duelist. Yeah, my Odeon voice impersonation is not very good. Yeah, and as you see, 8,000 versus Yami Merrick, so definitely the biggest challenge here. Uh, nope, we're good. Now, wahahaha, you fools. No, wait, that's the normal Merrick. Uh, how does Yami Merrick's voice go? Uh, well, it's obviously distorted, so I can't really do it, but, uh, the shadows are hungry, Pharaoh, and thirsting for you. I dare not disappoint them. Ha 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 ha! Your your friend made a foolish mistake, and now her mind's trapped in the shadow realm. Look at that hair. That hair is ridiculous. Now your friend's paying the ultimate price. All right. Da -da -da. Luckily, we got uh, solid wishes. Uh, so yeah, what was I talking about? Right, Me Yami Merrick strategy in this in this game. So uh, Gerard Reed, okay. Yep, no problem. I love that moment when my opponent falls right into my trap. Wa <laughs> ha! <laughs> my voice for him is awful, but that's okay. What you got, Yami Merrick? The shadows are hungry. And they must be fed. I, I'll activate solemn wishes. Uh, but yeah, well, what? Uh, but uh, yeah, as I was saying, yeah, I'm Emeric strategy. So there's actually a pretty big hint as to what Yami Merrick strategy is in this game. So if you remember, we've already unlocked, uh, you know, vanilla Merrick, uh, regular Merrick Ishtar, and his strategy is point and link obvious. It's uh. You know, he has a lot of flip monsters like uh, Maneater Bug, Morphing Jar 2, Morphing Jar, and he also has like Gravekeeper Servant, uh, Magic Thorn, Card Destruction, basically a deck out deck. And he also has, you know, Bistro Butcher. Uh, what's Yami Merrick's strategy? Basically the same thing, but amp it up a notch, amp it up a notch. So, yeah, expect more powerful traps and more flip effects. Uh, I guess I'll flip. No, 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 I'm gonna be wary of Mirror Force here. Let's just try to attack. Zambida, the duck. Heroic strike attack. Yeah, and as you see, Morphin Jar 2. Thankfully, he doesn't have a uh, Magic Thorn yet. Uh, because Magic Thorn's actually glitched in this game. And when you discard cards um, with a. Uh, wow, music's really amped up in this part. Uh, so he's got Man here, but we gotta be wary of that. Yeah, and he has Gravity Bind. That's his main strategy. It's to hold off your attacks with Gravity Vine while he, you know, does his deck out thing. Uh, Slate Warrior is good. Unfortunately, he does have Manager Bug, though, so... Yeah, not much we can really do about that. I uh, guess I'll set Torrential. And, uh... We've already summoned, right? Oh, no, we have not. Um... Let's just throw down Sinister Serpent. I'm pretty sure the AI is going to pick right what Maneater Bug, and we'll just Torrential next turn. So go ahead, Yami Merrick. Let's see what you got. Uh, we're at about 20 minutes. Yeah, let's keep going. I think we can keep going. 
Will the AI get it right? Uh, of course they will. It's fine. And he's already set it. So, yeah. Here we will. Now I activate one of the most powerful flood cards to exist. Go! Torrential Tribute. When a monster is summoned, this destroys all monsters on the field. This means you won't be getting the flip effect of your Magician of Faith, Yami Merrick. Alright, so I think we can go to about 25 minutes. And after that, uh, if we do not finish, I will continue in the next part, guys. Mystical Space Typhoon. Good. Destroy that face down. Black Pendant. Okay, so that was kind of a waste. Alright, so we got War Raider. Ah, and I guess I could revive Slate Warrior. Let's do it. Let's go all in. He's wide open. Get in while we can. Now I have to be premature billion. By paying 800 life points, medic, I'm able to resurrect him and send the graveyard. Now I'll choose the powerful Slate Warrior. <laughs> Looks like it's time to start you off with a clean slate. So, you're going to be scrapped, scraped off the pavement once again. Much like your sister Shizu, get me air kind of attack. Ah, how can I let you hurt me, you fool? Ah, oh, that sounded a little better. That Yami Mirror sounded a little bit better right there. I activate my premature period. Now, by paying 800 points, I can find Trilago in attack. <laughs> now I play another infinite card, and I'll end my turn, you fool. That sounded a little better. That sounded a little better. Ooh, Magic Jammer is good. Will protect us from stuff like a uh, dark hole and whatnot. Uh, let's just attack his face down first. See what happens. Good call, Morphine Jar. Okay, I'm okay with this. So he'll get one monster. We'll get two. And I can set a Sinister Serpent main phase too. So, both premature burial will fall off. And once again, thankfully he doesn't have Magical Thorn. I don't know if I finished that line of thought, but Magical Thorn is glitched in this game. So if you do discard cards off of Morphing Jar 2, you will take 500, you know, for each, you know, Magic Thorn. Unfortunately, like, I don't know why that's glitched in this game, but it is, so watch out for that, for sure. Uh, White Magic Combat, good. We can get rid of the last card in his hand. And we got Goblin Attack Force, and we know he has a uh, Magician of Faith face down, so that's good, that's good. And he, oh, another big part of this combo, usually he has Gravekeeper Servant. Um, and I guess I should talk about this, but there's a reason, like, you guys may have noticed all my decks are 60 card decks in this game. Uh, there's a handful of reasons for that. One, I just really like this game, and um, so Magician of Faith has 400 defense. Okay. Uh, what spells does he have? Yeah, okay, Premature Burial is probably the one he'll take back. Uh, like I said, there's reasons I uh, I run 60 cards. One, I like this game a lot, you know what I mean? And I just, you know, uh, we'll keep Gaia Power in case you need to use Magic Jammer. Uh, but yeah, there's plenty of cards I like, and I want to try to use them all. Uh, the other thing is that... Uh, uh, yeah, having a 60 card, and I actually recommend, well, maybe not a 60 card deck. Always gonna take Black Pendant, that's a surprise. But, um, I actually recommend using at least a 50 card deck in this game. Oh, of course he's got Cyber Jar. Man, we could have discarded some cards from his hand, too. Alright, Merrick, good move. But, uh, yeah, uh, I recommend using at least a 50 card deck. Because you'll run into like quite a few uh, deck out duelists in this game. Like the ones I can think of that do deck out are, you know, regular Merrick, Yami Merrick, uh, even uh, Sh uh, uh, Shadi, you know, goes with Gravekeeper Servant and the, you know, Magical Thorns and stuff. So yeah, Shadi, um, there's just so many people that use deck out. Oh, he does have Dark Hole and Magic Cylinder. Gotta watch out for that. Um, I'm, I am gonna crash here, because we do have Monster Reborn, so I'm not too worried. Um, but yeah, definitely watch out. Definitely, yeah, my recommendation, like, if you don't like the idea of 60 card decks, that's fine. Um, if you don't like 60, my recommendation is definitely at least, uh, at least 50. Uh, yeah. So, that's, yeah. And I haven't really talked about that all LP, so I'm kind of glad I thought of it here. Uh, let's see, man, we are at 25 minutes. 
Well, this is the first episode of this recording. Maybe I'll just try to keep going. I don't know if my phone will keep going to record. Uh, but let's try. Let's try. I guess I'll keep uh, Ma Mystic Space Typhoon for magic. You know what? Actually, no. If he dark holes, honestly, I'm fine with it. With it just being... Uh, yeah, uh, what's that? Oh, Mystic Space Typhoon. I see, I see. Yeah, that's a good call, that's a good call. Get rid of Guy Pal. That's a good call. I forgot he got Mystic Space Typhoon. But if he dark holes, I'm honestly okay with that. He did not dark hole, okay. But he's wide open. But we know one of those is a Magic Cylinder. So, hmm. Okay, Return Center to Sharpen. That's good. Jar of Greed. Let's see if he chains anything. What? United we stand. Good. Okay, good. He did chain something. So there's fairy box. Okay. So. Uh, now I haven't played Harpy's Feather Duster yet. Let's see if we can draw it. Graceful Charity? Part of the cards. Guide me. One, two, three. Ooh, no, but we did get a second. Perfect. We did get a second Mystic Space Typhoon. Okay. So I'll discard White Magical Hat. And he's got no monsters. This is the best part. I think we can wrap this up. He has no monsters, so... Let's summon. See if he has a summon trap. No, he does not. Okay. In that case... Okay. Mystic Space Typhoon on... Because we know he got Black Pendant too. Let's put it on this one. Did we get Magic Cylinder? We did. Good, good. I'm pretty sure this one's Black Pendant. I'm not too worried about that. Right now, I just want to try to maximize my number of attacks. Uh, so, let's go for... Let's go for probably Goblin Attack Force. Yeah, Goblin Attack Force. I use Monster Reborn to resurrect Goblin Attack Force. There we go. All right, and just in case, United we stand. There we go. All right. Alright, so we'll try Witch of the Black Forest first. Go, my Witch of the Black Forest. Direct attack. I guess I could play Mystic Space Typhoon on Fairy Box, but if this fails, we win. Did it work? Oh, yeah, it did. No! Wow, how could you defeat me? It's impossible! The shadows are disappearing, you fool. You may have escaped the darkness this time, but you cannot avoid the shadows forever, Mer Ah, Yugi. Wow, that honestly sounded a little odd to tune I'm kind of proud of myself. Uh, let's pick Winged Dragon of Raw, since that's Yami Merrick's main monster. Oh, we did get New Doria. That is one of his cards, so... All right, and the recording is still going. Good. All right, guys. Yeah, and let me show you the next triple real quick uh, before we end the episode. Yeah, so... This triple, triple 10 is all repeats, uh, but the big thing you may notice right here right about here is yeah your life points are only at 8,000 you know and you know these guys my and Joey they are going to and Merrick's at 6,000 so that's the thing about this triple it is all repeats and you do want to uh you know put each one at the end like you want to put you know Merrick at the end first beat it put Joey at the end you know next and beat it and so on and so forth and put my at the end last uh the main reason you want to do that is because it will upgrade their decks. Uh, for instance, I think after you do this part for Joey, I don't think he'll use, uh, like, uh, Swordsman of Landstar, you know, anymore and stuff. <laughs> he'll, he'll start to use some of his better cards. Uh, he might even get Jinzo after that. I don't know. Uh, anyway, we did get new Doria, which is pretty cool. Yeah, when destroyed in battle, but you can select a monster on the field and destroy it. Very solid dark monster. Uh, the rest of them, not so good. But uh, uh, yeah, I pretty much think that's going to be it for this episode. Um, yes, yeah, so in the next episode, we're going to do commentary again. Um, now, I'll probably only show this triple once with commentary. And the rest I'll probably do on the HDMI. Uh, but then, after we do this triple next episode, we will do some... Um, let me just show you guys here. We will do some single duels uh, versus, where's he at? 
versus, where is he? Yami Merrick here. Yeah, we will do some single duels with commentary. I don't know how many I'm going to do exactly. But yeah, look forward to that, guys. That is the plan. And then after, you know, after I do as many single duels as I want with Yami, Yami Merrick with commentary, after that, another dueling marathon. So, yeah. Uh, look forward to that, guys. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Man, this has been a long part. 30 minutes, 30 seconds. All right. See you guys next time. Have a great day. <laughs>